When you're learning how to code, the most important thing that you can do is write code, practice by building projects, break things. And I know for me, sometimes I get burnt out on writing lines of code, reading through lines of code, reading documentation, learning new concepts, positioning elements. And so sometimes I just need a break from the actual act of writing code. In these moments though, I find that I still want to be doing something code related or learning involved because I genuinely have a love for learning about code, learning about the tech industry in general. So it got me thinking about some things that I naturally do when I'm not actually physically coding, whether it's while I'm cooking, while I'm sitting on the couch doing nothing anyway, and just relaxing. These are some things that truly interest me and still guide me on the journey that I'm on to increasing my skills in my coding abilities and keeping the momentum going so that I don't completely just stop doing what I'm doing. These are things that I still feel bring value to my journey. So I hope that you can find something in here that you can do when you're having one of those days where you don't feel like actually coding. The first thing I want to talk about is listening to podcasts. I have come across a few different podcasts over my journey that have been very entertaining and very good to listen to, give me inspiration. I think I talked about this on one of my reels a few years ago, but one of the podcasts that I really love listening to is called Self Taught Dead. This was started by two individuals who taught themselves how to code and they shared their journey throughout that process, what they learned, what they wish they would have done different. And now they give advice to others that are on the self-taught path so that they can feel motivated. And what I found by listening to this po podcast in particular is that I don't feel so alone. I feel seen. I feel heard. I feel like okay, I'm not the only one going through what I'm going through. So that's one of the things that I get out of listening to podcasts, specifically this one, is that I don't feel alone. And that is big when it comes to learning how to code, especially if you're not in a traditional setting where there are others constantly around you doing the same thing that are at the same point as you. It's very important to find things, find communities, find ways to get around people that might be in the same position as you so that you don't feel like you're just going crazy and not getting things, not understanding things. Trust me, you are not the only one. And so I really do feel like listening to podcasts, like I said, specifically this one has really helped in in that process. Another thing along the same lines is finding YouTube videos that interview other software engineers, software developers, web developers, whatever their title is that is related to what you are doing or just tech related in general. You'd be surprised how many things are kind of like cross related in certain uh, roles. But I really love listening to these type of videos and watching interviews with others who have gotten to positions that I might want to get to in the future. These type of interviews always give me insight on different resources that I could be learning from, different paths that I didn't think that I could take, different experiences, just cultivate different types of motivation and really inspire you to kind of pull from some of the things that they might be doing and add those to your arsenal of things that you can be doing on your journey. It's also just really extremely inspiring to see other people starting from really nothing, no technical background, or, you know, some people do have technical backgrounds. Some people have been in tech since they were in elementary school. I think I heard somebody recently on TikTok say that he started learning about Python when he was like in sixth or fifth grade. I don't remember, but yeah, these interviews really have shown me just how much we have in common or just give me that silver lining that you can start from nothing and get to the points that you want to get to as long as you don't give up and you really put your work in because we all know this is not easy, but hearing it from someone else that they actually were able to achieve something that you might sometimes feel is unattainable can really help boost your spirits and keep you going. The next thing I want to talk about is watching Day in the Life videos. Now, this one can go either way for some people. Some people may not want to watch those kind of videos. For me, I have my specific reasons why I like to watch those videos. For one, they are very motivational and inspirational, and I'm not talking about the ones that just show all this glamorous, like I work at Google and this is my little sleeping pod and my free food and stuff. I still like those videos but those are not the ones I'm talking about particularly for the reasons of this video what I'm talking about are the ones that actually take you through their day they kind of talk about what they're doing meetings they might have stand-ups their actual routine that they go through to get through the day as a software developer engineer whatever their title is I know for me I love to see people go through their days and it gives me insight on how someone's day might be structured depending on what type of tech role they're in I do want to be open and candid here and say as a vlogger and content creator myself I do love to see how people create these videos that really capture their stories and I'm very nosy so I like to see people live in their life. <laughs> 
Another thing I like to do is research resources. Now, this can be another hit or miss with some people because sometimes learning about all the resources that are out there and available to you can be overwhelming. You might feel like there's just too much and it's information overload. I definitely get it. But for me, I feel like it's just something that I naturally love to do, not only for myself, but also because I have unintentionally created a space on my channel where I love to share resources with you guys. So anything that I come across that I feel could be helpful to my audience or to you know you guys out there watching, I love to share it because you never know. Everybody is not going to like 100 devs. Everybody's not going to like Free Code Camp. Everybody's not going to like the same things because we all learn differently and we all need different ways to learn. And so anything that I find that is free or close to free or just affordable overall, I would like to share it here. So researching resources is a huge part of the things that I like to do because you have to remember when I first started learning how to code, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any money. I was I had a daughter and I was pregnant with my second daughter. So I was really struggling to just make it through. And so I needed to find resources that were free or very, very cheap that my husband could probably help me swing $20 a month here to take things like Team Treehouse at the time. And so that's kind of where my love and obsession with finding different resources came about. Another reason why I like to learn about different resources is because I figured out that during my increased love of learning, I love to just figure out how things work together. So for instance, when I first started learning how to code, I started with Free Code Camp and things like Team Treehouse. Now that I found 100 devs, I have found platforms like Scrimba, um, different things that I found here recently. I figured out that not every resource can be enough on its own. So I realized that Free Code Camp is really, really great and it can be very powerful, but Free Code Camp on its own for me is not enough, it's not enough of the deep learning. With 100 devs, I get a deeper understanding of the concepts and the different things that we're doing, why we're doing the things that we're doing and not just applying them. And I feel like understanding why things work is really important. So coupling things like 100 devs with Scrimba or 100 devs with Free Code Camp has been really helpful because on one end, you get the introduction to the topic, you get an understanding of the topic, you learn about why you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. And then on the other end, you bring in another resource, you might get an even deeper learning or you get the opportunity to actually practice and apply the concepts. So learning new resources and figuring out how they can mix and be coupled together to create this one big you know, engine of learning for you is really helpful, in my opinion. The last thing I want to talk about is watching tech-related informational videos. Now, this could be anything that is related to actually learning how to code, or it can be informational videos about things that are going on in the industry. For instance, we all know that AI is a big topic, so picking a video that might teach you how to better your skill set to get more involved in that space, to increase your portfolio and different things that you have going on for yourself, could be really good to watch and get into. Another thing that I mean by this is watching tutorials, but not in the traditional sense of just watching someone actually build a project. Those are good too, but you don't want to get too stuck in those because you don't want to keep writing line for line the code that they're doing and not really understanding why they're doing it. You have to get in there and build your own projects and really figure out how to break things and how to build things so that you can truly understand why you're doing what you're doing. What I mean by tutorials is picking the tutorials that have a whole segment on the topic itself. So Traversy is a really good example of someone who does this. He might be going over how to learn Flexbox. I keep using this example because it's the first thing that always comes to my mind, but he could be going over anything. We'll just use Flexbox. The first part of the video is going to talk about what Flexbox is. The next part might be how to use it. The next part might be all of the different, you know, properties and values that have to do with Flexbox. And then at the very end, he'll do a mini project showing you how to actually apply the concepts that you just spent however long before that part of the video learning. So just to summarize that, find tutorials that will teach you something, but also give you maybe a mini project that you can try to do at the end. And I mentioned this in my last video about CSS and how I found ways to make it a little bit easier to learn. When you do these mini projects, a good thing that you can try to do is before they start to code it out, whoever you're watching, before they start to code it out, stop, pause the video on the design itself and see if you can remember the informational part of the video. See if you can try to build out what they're going to build out before they show you. And then if you get stuck or you just don't understand what's going on, play it through, see how they go about it. But this will just 
build on and teach you what you need to maybe focus on a little bit more and learn a little bit more about. So that's what I love to do is watch informational tech videos that, like I said, are about the industry itself or about actual concepts and topics to do with coding. So those are some of the things that I love to do when I don't physically want to write code and I'm burnt out on writing lines of code, looking at lines of code, testing, whatever it is that I have to do. But I still want to keep the momentum going and continue on adding value to my journey and my process to hitting certain goals that I have for myself throughout my coding journey. Hopefully you found something that is helpful for you or at least sparked some ideas of things that you could be doing when you don't physically wanna code and you just need a break from looking at the IDE. If you found anything at all helpful in this video, please consider liking it. I create content about tech, mindfulness, and my overall life in vlog form. So if that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing and checking out some of my other videos here on my channel. Thank you so much for making it to this point in the video. Thank you for watching. I love you guys, you know that, and I will see you in my next one.